Okay. So let's we're now moving on to lab six. Uh, let's. So we've got basically four PowerPoint slides to talk about. Um, there are two new packages, so Pinko package and Combat Prefab. So I'm going to bring those. I'm going to bring up Unity, and I'm going to bring in the. Uh, we'll go back to my project folders. I'm going to bring in the Combat Prefabs. And I'll bring in the Plinko package as well. Okay, so I didn't. So I'm going to make uh, two folders in here. Uh, first one's going to be, I'm going to call it Combat. And then the next one is going to be Plinko. So everything, Peg, Plinko, Sphere, that. Move that into that folder. Uh, case goes in there as well, and the tank's gonna go into combat. And then Plinko will go in there, and then these guys I'll drop into scenes just to get them out of the way. Um, there's a folder called Icons. I'm gonna put that into combat. Um, we need to go look into, into the icons folder and there are some materials. So here's this crater. Um, basically, for some reason, um, the materials are not crept. So here is crater. We will need to sign that crater to the albedo. And that will then create these objects correctly. So that's correct. Um, the next one is an explosion. That is correct. And then there is something called Yamcha. So here's the material and we will apply the material and then we've got Yamcha. And if you know anything about Dragon Ball, Yamcha got yamcha -ed. Yes, 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 I, w that, I did do this. Um, so. We will, we will, we will talk about those in a moment. They, they, uh, we will eventually use them. I don't. Um, so, lab six, lab six, seven, and eight build upon each other. So just be forewarned. There's, a, there's a lot. There's going to be a lot more going on as we move forward. Um, save the soccer scene. Let me see. Let's go to our lab document just qu quickly let me see this is notes yeah notes object, object yeah okay so let's just go over so we're starting it goes boom um this week we're creating uh we're going to work with understanding interaction between multiple objects we're going to revisit the, the runner and upgrade it to a path runner so uh, oh, to run a path points aka path runner um the next is we're going to build a plinko machine um, if you don't know what Plinko is, Google The Price is Right for video examples. And I, for copyright reasons, I can't, because I'm, I'm recording, I can't show you this right now. After the recording done, we'll Google that. Um, create a new scene Plinko. I actually think I've given you um, a Plinko scene. And we b bounce out, hey, I've given you the machine, basically. So you don't have to build it. Um, and then finally, we're going to build, I'm actually going to build a new map, a uh, new scene. Uh, it's going to be empty. I'm going to go into the, in the soccer, there is, there were the open arena. We're going to just pull that out. And I'll put that at zero, zero, zero. And I'll file and I'll save this as in combat, as combat. All right, so let's go back to the lab document quickly. Um, let me see. We'll create a projectile and then we'll build uh, a player control script. How far do we go? To... 
So we're gonna we're gonna spawn um, a projectile. Um, so let's go to let's start with the path runner, um, and I'm going to just for our purposes right now. Let's go just go to the plinko. Um, Scenes, uh, Sandbox Two. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So in, I'm gonna go in. I'm going to create, uh, grab here. So these should be just runners. And I'm gonna duplicate this. Um, this is just the runner. So here is the path runner. And I'm going to grab them. I'm going to move them up here. Now let's give them a new new color scheme. Um, essence, common essence. Crayon. Make you yellow. Give you Laker colors, um, and then I'm going to grab my path points. I'm going to duplicate them, and I'm just going to basically move them up so I have a box, effectively a box. So be up. Let's see. So you need to be C, and you will be ended up being path point. D. Okay. So we've got our scene set up effectively, and we'll go back to the path runner. We'll bring you down here. Bring you down here. There we go. And we're, we're going to remove this script. So let's start with. Lab 06, and we're going to start with creating a new mono behavior script, path runner. Open up Visual Studio. Grab, bring Visual Studio here. Um, we don't need smooth movement. We don't need rigid body. Uh, so let's grab the runner script. So we'll start by grabbing everything inside the script. And we're just going to paste over right here. So basically we're starting with with what the runner was doing. All right. The part that we need to move remove is uh, this is the runner specific. Uh, what we need to do instead is we need to create... Um, we will we'll make a, uh, a public, and I'm going to, um, I need to go over slides. I'm going to make a list. No, come on. And then we need, actually need to go up to using system dot. Uh, collections. Public list, game object, path list. Yeah, I thought it was in, is it, is it just in system? Hello. What's, what are you doing? C sharp list. Oh, it's collections dot generic. There we go. So the list that we, we need to use is in system dot collection generic. I will make sure the slides are updated to reflect this because these are not they generally these have been added previously uh, and they're not now. Um, we want a a integer of a 
the it's going to be our path list index and I do should have this as lowercase p and that will assign directly to zero and then we'll have a game object uh, we already have a current target so we don't need to we don't need to set that up um, just for a sake of argument I am going to grab these and I'm going to drop these below this and this is more um, when we're dealing with an array or a list we want to put that below things so again current target will not be target a but will be our path list at zero essentially oh we should really go in here and view path list index and we'll go over this code right now so that's the first thing is we need to start start with that the next piece ultimately is basically going to be is in is moving the target. So we're going to take this all out. Uh, we will take out. We'll actually grab this line of code, and this is actually going to be the last line of code in this function. Okay. So I'm going to write the code, and then we'll come back to the slides and go go over it. So basically, what what we're going to do is we, that. Basically, we have a path in index that's going to point to what's in our list. And list arrays are going to function slightly. There's only one slightly difference between the two. But we're going to in. So the path list index is going to get incremented. Now, as a list, um, if the path list index is greater than or equal to uh, the path list dot length oh, sorry it's count I've got the, I've got those and then conversely if pathless index So we're going to go up here just quickly. Um, we could do a public game object path array. So I'm going to jump down here. So with an array, so the number of things that are in an array are, is by its count, and those are the list. At, again, this is grab this. And inside, literally, the, the, the so if the uh, the pathless index is greater than or equal to the count, or in the case of the, the, the array, the, its length, um, the path, the index, the path the index, we're going to set that back to zero. We'll explain why in a moment why we, why we do that. But ultimately, this is the code. This is increment the, increment the index, so we're looking at our next item. If we're at the end of our array, or at the end, end of the list, we know that that value is going to be equal to the number in there. And then we'll then we'll reset if we have to reset the value, the index, we will, and then we'll get the 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 item out of the list. Note that I'm using hard braces here to indicate. So array note. This is what we we refer to as array, no, array notation. The hard braces. So it, the the container, which is either the the you know, an array or a uh, list, hard braces, and then um, the index, which is an, in an, an integer in there. So, um, what's the difference between an array and, an, and a list? Uh, a list you can do more with. You can add and you can remove items from a list on the fly. Array, you can't do so um, easily 
or extend the the size of the of the array is the other issue so I'm gonna go back up I'm just gonna comment out the array I'm just showing you this off all right let's I've jumped the gun over a lot of things let's go over let's go into the slides and let's start let's talk about containers all right there we go so again there are many types of containers all right right now we're just starting with the two most common it's either going to be an array or a list in C++, the, what we call a list in C-sharp is referred to as a vector. I know it's C-sharp, C++ being weird. Um, but just if that's kind of where you'd, you'd head. Um, an array basically is what is, so the idea behind an array is that you, there is a type of an object that you are going to hold. It could be integers, it could be strings, it could be game objects, it could be transforms, it could be cameras. Right. Um, declared is the is the, the type that is two brackets and then the array name. Arrays are, are containers of fixed size. Uh, size of an array is by its length. Array primitives and structures are by a value type array. So basically it's just you're holding the values themselves. Um, arrays of objects. So game objects, transforms. These are objects. They will be initialized with nulls and all the array location. move on a uh, list basically we use a list uh, bracket type list name list or container are variable variable size you can add remove clear them they, again the size of list is count by default the list starts with nothing in it and I will update this slide to include the the what you need to add for the for the list Again, here is an integer array. Here is an array of game objects. Here is a list of game objects. By making the array public, it is editable in the editor, and we don't have to worry about creating the list or the array ourselves. So if the, if the list was private, then we'd have to initialize, actually create the list object, and that would be using the new operator. But for our purposes with Unity, we don't need to do that. We just go go and set it public. It will it will initialize and create the array for us in code, so we don't have to worry about that. Again, here is the ArrayList example. Again, um, you want to so there's a, a little tab, and actually I should go. Let me go back and let me grab the code here. Let's just jump back to Unity just quickly. And we're going to make a... This is going to be container. And I'm just going to add this as part of the class. So I created an integer. Again, using system.collections generic so I've got my game object array and I got my list of game objects and I can go in to my scene and I need to save my file there we go and I'm just gonna go to the main camera I'm just gonna uh, I'll do a directional light for the heck of it and here is I can put list as list uh, integer array right now the list I can press the plus button to add elements and that's a, an, a, so a a particular place in an array or a list is going to be referred to as an element note that it starts at so element of zero uh, my inner array is I have four elements the last element I can refer to is element three so array start at zero order counting. So that's why if, with the, if the array, my path variable gets to four, it means I'm, out, I'm at the end of my array. I'm outside of the array or my list, what I'm holding. So again, I'm going to go four. 
33, 9001, negative 9001. Um, game object array, and I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to grab all of these game objects, and I'm going to grab them. I'm going to go back to my. I'm going to lock lock the editor. I'm going to undo uh, parenting the whole one thing. So I'm going to select these all again. I can click and drag them and bring them to the name game object array, and it will populate them with with those objects in the order, uh, top to bottom in the in the hierarchy. So, and then again, down with the game object list, I'll do the same thing with that. I'll open it up. You can see that I've already populated the list. Functionally, you know, they're holding the, you know, you can resize and change the, the, the array as you see fit um, in, in Unity. It's in code where you can't resize the code. That's why you would end up using a list. And typically you do, you'll end up using lists more often than arrays. Um, but arrays are uh, important things. Like if we're looking at the raw data of a texture, that's an array. All the pixels are, are stored, at, and it's a one-dimensional array. Um, you can convert between one and two-dimensional arrays very quickly, but that's not the scope of what we're talking about right now. So we'll go back. Again, container name, the index. The index is what is the, the index being... Um, what element are we talking about? You can assign value to the to the container, and you can get it out in the in the same way. I should this should not be index; it should be it should be element number. Idea: of the index is being a pointer, basically a, a holding a number that points to where we are currently. And then, obviously, game array object zero, um, show it first element. And grab the, if I can grab this. I will drop this function in right here. And I'm going to just copy and paste into start. And for our purposes, I'm going to go in. I'm going to change the order. So B will be first. So game object array A will be first. Uh, game game object list B will be first. And then we go press play. We go to the console. And I need to save my code before the changes take effect. Clear play and you now you can see game object was a game uh, game so the game object array a game object list B which is what I did in... okay uh, again container size length and count uh, pri again private arrays you're responsible for initializing uh, when a layer uh, when a array is listed declared private protected or in a local method and here is list declaring, add item, remove item, sign a list. Uh, again, this is what you're dealing with with, with the lists. Uh, note that list initialization is new list. Again, when we make it public, we don't have to deal with that. Again, add item, remove item, item to remove. You can remove at a particular index. Um, ask if something is in the in is in the list. Clear the list all all right, and then get the list size. And then there's array initialization. So I'm going to initialize the array. I can initialize an array of six strings. Um, internet array values would have been zero, zero, zero. Would have been no, 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 nothing strings. And there's more, more ways to deal with, with arrays. Um, you can look up the C# -sharp documentation for that. All right. So let's move on to our next set of slides. Looping structures. All right, so we'll talk about four for each and while, do while. Um, there's four. Again, do and do while. There's while and then there's while, do while. Um, of these, these are the two you need to be careful about using in Unity because if you screw up the while loop or the do while loop, you will, you will go into an infinite, you can go to infinite loop 
and you will hang Unity. Just saying. But mostly you're going to be using four and four each, four each in. So for loop is no number of times you you will um, you know the number of times you 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 need to loop. If you need the information related to the index variable, declare the variable before the loop. So if you need to store the index last process, for example. So here is so the structure is for the initializer. So this is like saying int i or int i index conditional this is when when should we continue when do we continue the for loop until this is false and then incrementer so if we the initializer is the index then the index would be plus plus and typically is going to be either like uh, like in, in, in the plus it the the incrementer plus plus um, you can use decrementers if you're going to go backwards to the list um, there is the version of the incrementer that goes before the variable so is the decrementer but people don't typically use those unless there's a reason unless there's a reason for it i'm just pointing them out but ultimately um you basically you're like you're going to go through your list from beginning to end for each it's when you want to iterate all over all of the items in the container and the containers in this case includes arrays and lists there are ways to break the for each early, but this is rare and for special cases only. Um, when you were in a for each, one of the things I'll point out: when you're in a for each, you don't want to you don't want to change the what's in the container, like the items. You don't want to remove items as you're going through the for each. Um, we'll show, we'll deal with how to deal with, hey, I'm going to go through here and find things that are dead, and then, and what you'll do is you'll put them into another list to go through and to clear out, essentially. So, so it's for each type in container, element name, um, what we're going to refer to in the code, in the container name. So here is the documentation. Um, Let's let's before I get to the while loop, let's just jump in and let's say Wow. Uh show all items in list. So I'm gonna make a function here just to make our lives easier. Uh, it's gonna be a void function. And so basically, it's for each um, game object. I'm going to call it game, game go in game object list. And then I'm just going to do debug dot log uh, go dot name. Is there an index number geo dot? Just thinking. No. So if I wanted an, an index number, I should be using a for for loop, um, or and again, the other way we could have written this is for index. Uh, sorry, uh, integer. Um, I'm gonna just use i. Sign that to zero. You do want to initialize it. Uh, I is less than or equal to, and it, it should be less than, but I use less than or equal to. Uh, it should be um, to, for security, just to, um, so it would be my game object list dot count. And here is going to be I plus plus. So here, I'm going to make a game object Geo, and this could be a cap. This should be capital G. It's going to be equal to game object list and the index is I. And then literally the, the debug line. So this is being held for the, for the for each. This is being held for us because we're going through and we're getting it. And I can go in and I'll be like, hey, I plus. 
colon. And so, and I'm going to go to not the game object list. I'm going to do the game object array. This will be the length. And we'll just go through the game object array here as well. So, and then I'm just going to do debug.log. I'm just doing some make this will make the essentially make the uh, the output look nice. So we'll go with, go with that that. Um, we'll go back to our we'll drop it in. It makes that side bounds an array. Oh, um, not not equal. It should be less. It should be less than. It should be less than in that case. Um, that's why. I, so again, what happened? We'll stop. Let's clear. Let's run it. And I'll stop. So here we go. So first first point game object list B A C D. That's correct. And here in the array A B C D. So, um, what I had done here was that I did uh, equal, less than or equal to. Um, I needed to actually do less, just less than, because if I if I'm equal to, I'm at I'm on an element that's not an array. So there may be four items in the array, but element four does not exist. The last element is element three. If you know the number of items in the array, the last item that you can access is the count minus one. Okay. All right, let's talk about do and do while. All right, so um, a while loop is used when you don't know the number of items you could loop, or the number of times you could loop. And the best practice with a while loop and the do while loop is use a Boolean. All right. Don't 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 start trying to do lots of math. No, just use a boolean to control the while loop. Again, here's the and the difference between the do the while and the do while is that while you start with the conditional first and then with the do while you do the code block and then you do the conditional after the code block. So, um, not going to go into deep detail. You mean you've done if statements? This is just, if this is true, continue doing the block. If it falls, it stops. All right. Spawn and destroy. All right. So instantiate, aka means to create a spawn a prefab. So in, to create spawn a new prefab, you need to know the original prefab to spawn, where to spawn, and the rotation to spawn at with. And we mean by original prefab, we mean, uh, let's go back to Unity, we, for our purposes, we're talking about things in the project folder. So if we go to assets, here's a prefab, here are all these different prefabs we created earlier on. So here is, I actually created a projectile prefab. We can, let's go, go in quickly, and I'm going to go and I'm going to assign that. The, this yellow material, just so that it is. Uh, we do not want any position on here, as well as we do not want any rotation. So it's good, good idea to basically. Oh, that's. Um, hold on, I'm looking at not. Here we go. So position is nine. Here we go. So make sure you have your position is zeroed out. The sphere, we do want that up here. Um, I think for our purposes, I think I'm going to do zero. I'm going to go 0.5, just, just slightly. 
Uh, now nah, we'll, we'll put this at zero for right now. So we will use this projectile later on in this this class. All right, I'm gonna go back, um, hit the tab right here to get back to the scene. Um, actually, before we go on, um, the path runner. Let's go through the scripts. Let's put the path runner on. Uh, open. I'm gonna open up the path list again. I'm gonna lock this down so I can add these in. I'll turn on has path direction, and then when we press play, go back to the scene view. You can see that he is now running those path points. So one of the first things you'll be asked is to set up a projectile. Um, so let's let's go back to the slides just quickly. So again, original prefab to spawn. It'll be in your project window. Won't be in something from the scene. You can pick something in the scene to, sp to, to, to spawn, and there there may be times and places where that's what you want to do. But ultimately, as we move forward. Um, you want to be typically you're going to be using prefabs that you've created into your into your uh, your content folder. Some cases you'll provide a parent to spawn to, so you'll you'll provide another object to be the parent, and it will spawn underneath that. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, destroy, destroy, move something from the world can be any game object, can be a component. Um, this refers to the current script, and then you can also give an optional parameter to set a time for destruction. This value determines the time after the destroy call is made. Uh, there's really not much here. So there's a concept that you should know about. It's, it's, it's called a factory. Factory refers to classes and objects that handle creation of other objects. Um, heavily used in Epic, by Epic in the development of Unreal Tournament um, and how they use it in an Unreal Tournament. As we get more complex objects we are spawning, we'll require additional code to handle different tasks. And this can be for object creating or object, you know, for object creation or object spawning. So, for example, hey, enemy spawners from Gauntlet 2 would be a factory. They they create enemies. Now, this is an, an example with gameplay implications because you can go up and hit hit the factory and disable it by destroying it. All right. Um, just so we have a clue, uh, idea of what we're talking about, we're, again, we're going to start dealing with object object stuff, and this is more to give you um, an idea of where we're going. Public methods. Um, again, if we if the variable is not made public, it can be edited in the editor. You have a reference to a script in C sharp. You can access all the public members and methods via the dot editor. So if we make a public function, you can, and we have a reference to that script. You can, like again, the ball. The ball script was we had the public. Uh, reset function. If we had a value, if the ball, if different balls give different different values for some reason, um, ultimately then that would be, end up being um, that would be like the ball script dot points awarded. Um, script names are C sharp, C sharp objects. We can use them as a type of variable. Um, and some of you used, you know, int, flow, bool, a game, a game object, transform, vector3. Vector3 is a structure, but that is a, another type that we can use. Um, we had quaternions for holding a rotation. So again, here is public access. Um, again, here's the public int, here's the private int. And then... In here, uh, we can show the public and private int. Here, we can change the private int by a, a, a get a, a setting function. And this is showing how we can change, you know, change and get. And again, and I there should be a script here at the end. You can put all throw this together to put the put the script together. Private is private; it's not public. So the below, so if we tried to do this, like reference of a uh, of our script dot private int, this won't be allowed because it's private. 
the term that you will hear later on is this we're dealing with what's called encapsulation and basically basically means that we are make controlling how this particular variable is being being controlled and being used a good idea like hey if you're making a date object the the time and the day and the month um, and year to a certain extent would be you'd, you'd have controls you wouldn't allow someone to edit them directly but you would give them access ways to provide um, ways to change it so that you're not getting a month of 13 or a month of negative 5 a day of 23 a uh, thousand that makes no sense or a day of neg of zero day of negative 55 these have no meaning um, again month of negative of 15 that does make no sense so so your interfaces would be there to help control that the values that you are in your date your class are valid Uh, game object and component representation. Again, we've seen this already in another slide, but we're showing up again. I'm going to use blue for transform. The render mesh and the um, this two piece, pieces of the render is going to be purple. The cl any collider will be green. Any rigid body will be yellow. Scripts will be the um, the light blue. So single object example here is a sphere. Has a transform, sphere collider, rigid body, draw uh, the, the script, and then the mesh collider and mesh renderer. Sorry, mesh, mesh filter and mesh renderer. Uh, empty game object, hooray, it just has a transform. Now, you can see right here, I've given this thing, an object. Uh, here's the empty object, and I've given it a, a title that you can see. Let's just jump in Unity quickly right now. And I'm going to make uh, an empty object. I'm going to call it, um, yeah, I'll just leave it game object. And I'm going to go up to it. And you can see right now it is, where the heck is it? I'm going to put it zero, zero, zero. Hold on. There we go. You remember to unlock the editor. So here is my game object. And I go off and I click it. And now I can't click it because unless I click it in the hierarchy. What I can do is this box right here. You can click on it and you can select an icon. So you can select, again, I'm going to select the yellow. You can see that now it has that title I can click on. Um, you can go to other and you can give it a, um, a texture. And I'm just going to go, what the heck, I'll just pick that. And that's the text align button. Go figure. I actually looks pretty cool. So now, like, I can go click that off, go do stuff, come back, click on that now. And so I can, now I've made a, basically a clickable icon um, that I can select the game, the object. So that's, that's, you, you, what is that? Oh, press play. Oh, it's, it's, it's not going to show up in the, it's not going to show up in the world. Yeah, this is this is this is just a an icon. So again, this object has no rendering component. It's just a game. It's just a, a game object. Like again, I could go and I could have gone in here. Um, I can turn off the mesh, the render filters. And I'll press play, and then off they go. Again, you can see that my this object, right, you know, he he is running those points, even though they're not visible. Same thing with the blue, the blue one as well. You can see them because there there is something here, but in game they're 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 not visible. So what is visible in the editor versus what visible in game are two different things. Those my slides. All right, capsule collider example. Now the capsule collider, the capsule character has been changed, where the cube is uh, is parented to to the like player one in this case. This was the older way of how it was built, where it was player one, the capsule. Actually, it might be still this way. Um, yeah. So like, so here is up here. We've got our transform. We have the rigid body and the script that controls the the you know for the football player. Here is the, the capsule here, transform, 
mesh mesh information, um, collider, and then here's the cube, transform, mesh information, collider. Um, we could remove the collider on the cube because we don't necessarily need to use it, but it's still there. Uh, the tank. So let's. What is the tank? So we go back in. Let's actually go to the combat. I'm going to save this scene. So if we go back to the combat, um, there is a tank prefab. And it's here built for you so that you don't have to build it yourself. Is it made out of primitives? Absolutely. So we will you will be making two characters. Um, so we go back to the prefabs here. Um, you will need both of these uh, for this lab. Um, you you can start you'll start you'll start with one of these most likely the the player um, but essentially when we're done after lab so this is lab six lab, we're done with lab eight you'll have both of these two characters um, up and running and each of them will behave in a different way you can set them up to be, behave in a different way so we'll we'll worry we'll talk more about that when we get to the lab that lab section. Um, but basically, here's the tank. The tank will eventually have a, the rigid body and a script at the top. And then here are all the different pieces. Multiple object, ray cast visualized. In this case, the ray has hit the, 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 the cube collider of the tank. Um, we'll talk about how do we do ray casting and debug rays, um, I think, next week. And here's the thing that we, that I want you to be aware about, and this is gonna not gonna be a, we're not gonna worry about this much this week, but it will be something later. This, um, I don't think we're doing the, the 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 damage portion this week, but when we do, just to note that like, hey, in the previous example, we hit the cube. This is what we hit. The script that we want is is in the parent up in the, up up here. So again, where we ask for get component, in this case, we are going to start asking for get component and parent. Uh, Transform.parent is the, you know, if the parent has no parent, uh, has transform component has a parent property. If the parent has no, if the object has no parent, there's a value is null. So what this means is you can attach things and detach things uh, based on the parent. You can set the parent null, you can set the parent to, to another object and create hierarchies that way. Get component and children, get component and parent. Both return a single component. Um, sometimes we'll get the version that's plural, S. Both re and both return an array of the component type. And then there's messages, send message broadcast, send messages upwards. Uh, calls a method on, uh, on every model behavior in the script. This is you want to be careful with. Not everything should should be. You should be not be sending messages. Um, it's there. It's useful, but not everything should be. This is, should be used sparingly. Um, find find objects. Several static methods. You have several static methods. You find object. Um, you can find finds a game object by the name returns it. There is find by tag if you're using a tag system, but there's also find by type, and this is the most important version. Let's say I want to find, um, I have, um, I made a, let's say I've got multiple soccer balls in the scene. I can use find by type soccer ball and find them all and, to, and set and, and track those objects. Or the soccer nets. We could have used find by type soccer net. And in the soccer scene, it would have given us back an array of, the plural would have given us an array of each of the soccer nets. That's you know the object objects finding dealing with multiple objects. All right, so let's get back to the lab requirement. Um, we've done the runner script, so let's go to look at the Plinko machine. Let's 
jump to Plinko. I'll save the scene. So again, here we go. So I'm going to start off. I'm actually going to start with um, a 3D object, which is going to be a cube. Zero, 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 and I think 10 was the 15. Okay, we'll, we'll set, set that up here. And I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. And I'm going to put that there. So this will be path point A. I'm going to duplicate that. Path point B. Pull this over here. And then I'm going to duplicate this, uh, bring it back to zero. So negative 21. Okay, I'll put this at. Um, we'll do 18 and negative 18, just for the sake of values for right now. All right, and I'm going to make this, this bigger. And this is going to be my uh, spawner. OK, so for our purposes, we're going to go back to I think lab four. And I'm going to grab the runner script. I'm going to turn off the box collider. Um, and then basically, I'm going to put, put path point A, path point B down here. And I'll crank this up to 20, and I'll press play, and you'll see that I've got that bouncing back and forth. And that's still, that's slow. Let's crank this up, 50. There we go. That's moving pretty, pretty nicely now. Okay, so let's jump to back to lab six, and this is going to be... Um, so we need to create um, a Plinko disk. And it's going to yell because of this. Uh, we will need another script. It will be the Plinko uh, spawner. Let's close Visual Studio for one moment. And then we will need Plinko uh, slot. OK. Let's go back to Plinko. Here's the sphere. I'll lock this for one moment. I'm going to jump down to my lab folder. And I'm going to give this sphere the Plinko disk script. So just so that we've defined this object in this way. So we've added that to, um, let's click on the spawner and we want to give that the spawner script. Okay, so let's actually, so for our disk, there's really nothing that we need to do. Um, I, yeah, there's nothing that we need to do for this, the, the disk itself. So let's go back to, where's lab six? Here we go. So here is, so we've got the spawner, the slot, and the disk. So for the disk, it's not, we're not going to write any code in here. Um, for the spawner, First thing that we are going to do is going to be um, is going to be a um, public game object. 
Plinko dis prefab. And I'm gonna just I'm gonna um, using Unity engine input system. And so an update basically we're going to do uh, keyboard KB is equal to keyboard dot current if KB is not equal to null. And then we will get if KB space key was pressed this frame. We're going to instantiate. And instantiate is gonna have it's gonna have multiple. Um, the version we want is Plinko disk prefab. Um, we want the game object dot transform, and I'm going to do this on multiple lines, just so you can see it um, here in the. But normally you would do this in one line. Uh, position, and there would be game object dot transform dot rotation. And we'll save that. And we'll come back to our game. Uh, so we have to. So you can put multiple scripts here. So we've got the spawner here and the runner script. So the runner script is going to control its behavior from moving back and forth, and Plinko spawner is going to control how what is being spawned. Let's go back to the Plinko, and we're going to again select the spawner and assign it the sphere. And if we go back into game. So I've set them up, but what I have not done is I have not set them to be um, hello. I need to add a component of the rigid body. That's what I forgot. So we'll go back. I will save the project. I'll press play, and now. Cool. So we've got them spawning. They are entering into the, the the machine and they drop down. But what's now not happening is that they're collecting down here. Well, this is where the slot comes into play. So I'm going to grab the spawner. I'm actually going to duplicate the, uh, the object and I'll call it slot. I'm going to remove the runner script, the spawner script, I'm going to go back to my lab folder and go to this slot and I'm going to give it the slot script. If I can. Yeah, the, 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 so the spawner has the, the, that's what I removed, the spawner script. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down to zero. I'm going to then now pull this forward. And I now need to move this down further. So I'll bring this down. So I need to make the, I think this is eight. Uh, so this is six will fit in here. Z, I think, eight. Uh, I'll do ten. And then I think five is what I want. No, I want four. Three? Three. And I need to move it up just a little bit. Uh, I'll do four. There we go. So that is going to be my where the area for the slot. Um, it is. I'm going to turn this. This is going to be a trigger. So let's take a look at the slot. So basically, the slot has basically um, there's going to have a public 
um, integer points awarded, and I'll say that I'll set this to 100 just to have it. And then the behavior that it needs right now is on trigger enter. And so the first thing I'm going to do when I get the other, I'm going to ask, hey, um, I'm going to ask if it's a Plinko disk. So it's going to start with how PD is going to be other get uh, component. I'm going to use get component parent out of the gate. I'm going to ask if it's a Plinko disk. And if it is, Basically, I'm going to go and going to do destroy the Plinko disks game object. And later on, we will output the score. So I'm going to press play. And you will see that the balls that hit that trigger are going to die right away. It is gone. So, so let's stop. So this will be. Uh, I'm going to duplicate each of these slots. So we'll do all of them. And now the thing I'm going to select all those slots. I'm going to turn off their mesh renderer. So we so. And now I'm going to go, and off we go. What just happened? Air trigger. What is that? What is not on? Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There you go. You can see that they're dying right away. All right, let's let's improve that behavior just quickly. So we're going to do a uh, public float um, dis destroy delay. We'll say one and a half seconds. So what we can do is then uh, the next is. How long does it wait before it destroys the object? And this is the destroy delay value. And so now when we press play and we pl replay it, when they die, there's like a second half before they die. All right. All right. So far, so good? All right. All right. I'm going to stop the recording right here.